and welcome to part 2 of my Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial series, how to make a follower mod like Lucian Flavius. Now, in the last part we created our follower, a friendly Khajiit called Jacuzzi, placed him in the world and added him to the vanilla follower framework. In this episode we're going to be shifting him across to a custom follower framework so we can start giving him some unique things to say. But why, Joseph, I hear you cry, what's wrong with the vanilla framework? Let me explain. Skyrim has a default system for managing followers, which is what's commonly referred to as the vanilla follower framework. It handles all the followers in the base game and it's set up to work automatically for any NPC which is added to the correct factions and has one of the generic vanilla voice types. Now at the moment Jacuzzi has a vanilla voice type, which means he's perfectly suited to being on the vanilla framework. It is possible to have a custom voice follower on the vanilla framework and many tutorials online will tell you how to do this, however there are advantages and disadvantages to doing so. On the one hand, it's slightly more straightforward to set up a follower on the vanilla framework than it is on a custom one, and you'll find you have a better chance at maintaining compatibility with the popular follower management mods like AFT, EFF, NFF, UFO, etc etc. However, on the other hand, the vanilla framework is fundamentally limited in what features it'll allow you to add to your follower. And possibly more importantly, it has an issue with compatibility, which means if your user has installed another follower mod, which is also on the vanilla follower framework but has a custom voice, those two mods are going to conflict, which is going to cause issues for both you and your players further down the line. With that in mind, plus the fact that I said I was going to tell you how to make a follower mod like Lucian Flavius, which I can't do on the vanilla framework, we're going to be making a custom one. But don't worry, I'm going to make the process as easy as possible for you. You're not going to have to write any scripts because they've all already been written for you, and you'll find them in the appendices linked in the description below. I'm going to be here to walk you through the entire process, and if at any point you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below or shoot them at me in one of my Twitch streams. Now, let's get started! So here we are again back in the creation kit, and the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the open button and find your mod from last time. Now, it's going to be a bit of a hunt, it'll be somewhere in here among all the mods you have installed. Let's see if we can find it. Aha! JR12 tutorial follower. And when you've found it, just click on it and click set as active file. And that will change to active file. Now, while you're here, it's a good opportunity to fill in these boxes. So created by Joseph Russell. And then I usually like to pop a version number in here. So this is Jacuzzi follower version 1.0.0. And if that's all good, we can hit OK. Wait for it to load up. As I mentioned before, this is a much faster process loading up if you're on SE using New Chem's Creation Kit fixes. On LE, you're going to have to keep clicking those yes to all buttons as they pop up. Dum -ba -dum -ba -bum -bum, we're nearly there. Ta da! Here we are. Now, now that we've got it loaded, in order to change ourselves across to that custom follower framework, we're going to have to find our actor from last time. So you can either find it using the filter here with your prefix. Or you can use this show only active forms button instead. Either works. Here he is. So open that up and we're going to need to add him to a new faction. So go over to the factions tab. Right click. New. And this one is called dismissed follower faction. That's the one. And you're going to leave that at rank zero. That's all we need to do to him, so hit OK. The next thing we're going to need to do is create a global variable to keep track of whether or not he's currently recruited. Now this will come into play a bit later on in the process, but it's definitely worth making it now. So click on global down here, right click in the white area and hit new. And we're going to create a new global variable here, which we're going to put our prefix there, JR12. And I can put JR12 jacuzzi recruited and it's going to be zero by default leave the variable type at short because this is just going to be a variable that's either zero or one it's going to be zero when he's dismissed one when he's recruited and then don't check the constant button because we want to be able to change this okay so now in order to start putting this framework together we're going to have to create a quest 
Now I know that might seem a little bit counterintuitive because we don't have any quest objectives and we're not planning on anything showing up in the journal. However, it's just the way the creation kit works. Any dialogue in the game has to be done through a quest. And we want to attach some scripts to that quest in order to make this framework function. So, we're going to have to put our mouse over into this clear area again, right click and press new. So here is our quest dialog box. You're going to have to get very familiar with this. Now up here in the ID section is where we're going to give our quest its ID. And that's going to be our prefix, JR12, and then Jacuzzi, follower. So this is our follower quest. You can leave the type at none. Don't worry about a name because the player is never going to see this. Set the priority to 50. 50 is a relatively sensible priority to have. Priority is the order in which the game engine will process your quests. So it will prioritise higher priority quests. 50 is a good place to set a follower quest priority to. Don't worry about event. Um, do check allow repeated stages because that might come in handy later on. We'll ignore this box for now, but we will come back to it in a bit. So now we're going to go over to scripts, this tab over here, the scripts tab. And now things get exciting. Now, like I said before, you're not going to have to write any scripts yourself because they've all already been written for you. We're going to be using modified versions of the ones provided in the excellent Creating Custom Follower Framework tutorial by Creatox, Mafia Swag, and Jack. I've linked it in the description below. Please do give it an endorsement. It's how I learned to do all of this in the first place. So what you're going to have to do is click on Add to add a new script here. Now, it's going to take a little moment to load. Here we are, and we have a list of all the scripts that are currently in the game. And you can attach one of those if you wanted, but we don't want to do that. We want to create a new script. So click on this new script button here and press OK. Here we are. Now we want to give this script a name, and we're going to call our script JR12, because we've got to have that prefix there, Jacuzzi Controller. JR12 Jacuzzi Controller. And we're going to hit OK. Then when that's appeared over there, you need to right click on it and you need to hit Edit Source. And that brings up this script editing dialog here. Now it's time for some coding wizardry. All you have to do for this script is look in the description below this video and find Appendix 2A Follower Controller Script. Click on the link next to that and it'll take you to a dedicated page on my website where we have the whole script written here for you. So just highlight all of that, copy it, go back to the creation kit, delete everything that's already in this box, and then do Control and V to paste the script into here. Now before you do anything else, you'll have to change this name where it says JR12 Jacuzzi Controller to whatever the name is of your script. When you've done that, press Ctrl and S to save the script and it'll compile and with a bit of luck, you won't have any errors or warnings. Now, because this is all quite important, I will take a moment to explain to you how it all works, just to give you a general overview of what we're actually doing in your mod. So to start with here, we're defining all the properties used in the script. Now, a property is anything that the script has to either be able to see or make changes to outside of the script itself. So here we have an actor for the player, because we need to be able to do things to the player. We have a reference alias, which I'll talk about in a little bit, for your follower. We have the factions of dismissed follower faction and current hireling, which we haven't come across yet. We've got various messages. These are the different messages that appear when you dismiss your follower. So it'll say something like, your follower has left your service. And there's different variants of that for different situations in the game. There's a property of type set hireling rehire with the name hireling rehire script. Now this is another script that controls follower behavior that we want to refer to in our script. So by defining it here, it'll allow us to call upon its functions within our own. Then we've got the global variable property follower recruited. Now this is the global variable we made at the start of the video to record whether or not Jacuzzi is currently supposed to be with us. And then finally, we've got the int property iFollowerDismiss auto conditional, and that is a special conditional variable contained within the script that's going to be used elsewhere, and you don't really need to worry about it too much right now. 
Right, now within this script we have various functions defined. A function is a little section of script that you can call on demand. So rather than typing all of this out again whenever we want to do a particular thing, uh, i.e. in dialog, etc., we can simply call this function to automatically execute all of this code for us. So it saves a lot of time and effort. There's four functions defined in this. And those functions are all here. We've got the set follower, follower wait, follower follow, and dismiss follower. So set follower defines our actor, which is called follower actor, as whatever reference is passed into the function. That's follower ref. We then take them out of the dismissed follower faction, which makes sense because they're no longer dismissed. And we check that the relationship rank is currently less than three and that the relationship rank is currently greater than or equal to zero. And if so, it sets the relationship rank to three between the follower and the player to make sure everything works properly. It then sets the follower as the player's teammate, which will mean they'll copy you, sneak when you sneak, follow you around, etc. It'll then take the reference alias for our follower, which we still haven't created yet, and fill it with that follower actor, which will mean our NPC has now been added to the framework. It'll then force our actor to evaluate packages, which will make it start following you right away rather than waiting for the engine to figure out that he's supposed to follow you. And it's going to set that global variable we made to check whether the follower is recruited to one. Then the function ends. So that's everything that happens when we call set follower. Next one is follower wait. So this is going to be used when we tell our follower to wait. And again, that gets the actor from the follower alias here. And it sets the actor value for that follower, the waiting for player value, which is a flag that tells us whether or not the actor is currently waiting. And it sets that to one. And then finally, it will display an objective for us to tell us where our follower is currently waiting so we can pick them up again later. In the next function, we've got follower follow. Again, that gets the actor reference for our follower. It sets that waiting for player value to zero now. So this is when we're picking up our follower again after they've been waiting for us. So that value is set back to zero. We'll then set that objective to no longer be displayed and then we'll force it to evaluate the package. So again, it'll tell them, right, start following the player immediately. Finally, our dismiss follower function is the longest function here. And what that says is, if there is a follower inside the alias, so if this person is already following you and the person is not dead, so and get dead equals false, the first thing that will happen is it will check which of these messages are appropriate to show. So depending on which situation you're in, it'll show a different message in the top left hand corner of your screen. So there's the default, your follower has left your service, and there's all the variants we talked about before. And then at the end, there's a fail safe, which says if none of these are true, then just stick with the your follower has left your service message. Then we've got the actor, which is our dismissed follower actor. So it's again saving that actor reference. It'll stop any combat for that follower who's leaving. It'll add them to the dismissed follower faction. It'll set them to no longer be the player's teammate. It'll remove them from the current hireling faction. And it'll set that waiting for player value to zero. So if they were already waiting at the time when you dismiss them, they're no longer gonna wait for you. It'll then set that global variable, the follower recruited thing that we made to zero. It'll then call a script, another function, within the hireling rehire script. Now this is a vanilla script and it has a function in it called dismiss hireling. So we're going to tell it to dismiss the actor that we have saved as dismissed follower actor, which is our follower. Finally, there's a thing here where your follower can say a line when it's dismissed, a special line as they're dismissed and walking away from you, but we're not going to worry about that. That's not going to happen within our follower mod but it's there in case you want it to, and you may decide to add in something for that later on. Finally, it'll clear our follower out of the alias, and it'll set this value I follower dismissed to zero, which you don't really need to worry about what that does. And that's everything in this script. So we're gonna close that now, and now we need to define its properties. So all those properties we talked about at the beginning of the script, we need to tell them what they should all point to. 
You can fill a lot of them by clicking on auto fill all here. And if you press that, nine properties auto fill. So it's automatically filled in all of these to what they should point to because their names match up with what they are in the object window. However, there are some that won't. Uh, don't worry about follower alias for now because we haven't yet created the alias for our follower. So we're going to leave that exactly as it is and we'll come back to it. Follower rec recruited, we need to point to our global variable we created. So click on that and press edit value and it'll say pick object. Now start to type in your prefix and it should come up. Here we are, JR12 Jacuzzi recruited. So just click on that. Then move on to the next one, hireling rehire script. Now this one, if you press edit value and hit the drop down menu, you'll find there's only one option, and that's dialogue follower, which is the quest that contains the set hireling rehire script. So that tells the game where it'll find that script that we want to call a function from. Finally, I follower dismiss is just an int, and we don't need to worry about that because that doesn't point to anything. That's an internal variable for the uh, script. So you're just gonna hit okay now. We're done with all of that. And we're ready to move on with the scripting extravaganza. Now the next step is to hit OK. And we've got a fatal error, which is a crash. How exciting is that? So this is one of the reasons that we need to make sure we regularly save, because this does happen from time to time. So I've now lost all my progress of what I just showed you. So I'm going to fill all of this out again, exactly as I just did it. And then we'll carry on. A long time later. And I'm back! Now that actually took me a few attempts to solve because I had the same crash in the same place a couple more times. And the way I solved it was quite a common way of solving crashes with the creation kit, which is to break everything down into bite-sized chunks. So I created the quest, set the ID and the priority in the checkboxes, pressed OK, and saved. Then I reopened the quest, created the script, pressed OK, saved. Reopened the quest, added the properties, pressed OK and saved. And doing it that way round obviously gave the creation kit a bit less to chew on at a time, and it was happy with that. So now we're back where we were, the next thing to do is go across to the quest aliases tab. So now let's create our reference alias for Jacuzzi. So right click in this space and select new reference alias. It'll take a few seconds to load, so grab yourself a cup of tea, twiddle your thumbs, bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum, and we have lift off. So in the alias name up here, I'm just going to call it Jacuzzi. And then over here, you're going to check the optional checkbox. And that means it's still valid for this reference alias to be empty, which it will be until we've recruited Jacuzzi, at which point it will be filled with his reference. You also need to check users stored text and stores text. And that will allow us to use the name of whatever NPC fills this reference in an objective a bit later on. Now select for the fill type specific reference. Leave this empty. Don't click on select forced reference. Just leave it empty and then we can fill it with a script manually later. Now we're going to need to add a couple of factions under alias data. So right click in there and select add. Then we're going to select player follower faction. That's this one here. Press OK. And we're also going to add current follower faction. So now when our NPC is recruited, he'll be placed into these two factions. The other thing we need to add is some alias package data. Now there's two we need to add here, same as before. The first one is player follower say dismiss package, this one here. And the second one is player follower package. Now it's very important that they're this way round, so make sure you get this order right. If you want to change the order, select one and use these arrows to move it up and down. So now we need to add a script to this alias, and we can do that by pressing the add button up here. Once again, select new script, and this time we're going to call it JR12 Jacuzzi Quest Alias Script. So just press OK. Now select it and press edit source. Now this time you're going to need the script that I've called appendix 2b, follower alias script. So click on that in the description and it'll take you to this web page. Select the script here, copy it, return to the creation kit, delete everything already in the script, press Ctrl and V to paste. 
Now, once again, make sure that your name here is changed to match the name of the script. That's very important. Do the same where it occurs again in the Get Owning Quest section below. Leave all the rest as it is, and then Control and S to save and compile. And once again, we've got zero errors and zero warnings. Now I'll just talk you through what this does. Again, here we're defining our properties. So we've got the current hireling faction, we've got the follower dismiss message property, and we've got the actor property for the player ref. Then here we've got two event functions. So these are special functions that happen when a particular event occurs. So this event is on combat state changed with inputs of the target and the combat state. So if the target is the player, as in, if Jacuzzi has initiated combat with the player, the player is attacking Jacuzzi, then Jacuzzi needs to be automatically dismissed so he can fight back. So this is calling that function within our Jacuzzi controller script to dismiss the follower. And then over here, we've got event on death. So if Jacuzzi is killed, then they need to be removed from the current follower faction and cleared from the alias. We're done with that now, so close it down, go to Properties, and we need to fill these in. So press Auto Fill All, and all three of them should be done. And now we're done with this alias, so just press OK. Now we need to create that quest objective so we can track him down when he's waiting for us. So click on the Quest Objectives tab up here. Then right click in this area and select New. Change this index to 10 a slightly more sensible number to use here than zero. And then you want to use these triangular brackets. I'm not really sure what they're called, but they look like that. And write alias equals jacuzzi, although of course you'll have to use whatever the name is of your alias, is waiting for you. And this name here will be replaced by whatever name your actor has. Then under here, you're going to need to select a target now for the objective, which is where that objective marker should point. So right click in there and select new. It says no target by default, so now you're going to need to choose the alias it should point at, which should be Jacuzzi. And finally down here, this is a condition stack. Now you'll see a lot of these with the dialog. These are the conditions that must be true for the marker to point at the particular NPC. So right click in here and select new. Now the condition we want, we're going to click on this drop down menu and we're going to type in get actor value. There we go, get actor value. And we're going to check waiting for player. And you may remember that that's going to be equal to one when the NPC is waiting for us. So if you say get active value waiting for player equals one, then when this is true, this objective will point at our alias. Now return to quest data. And the last thing we need to do before we're ready to set up any dialogue is we need to attach another condition to all the dialogue within the quest. So in the quest data section, this thing, quest dialogue conditions, these are general conditions that will apply to all the dialogue we add for this quest. So before any of the condition stacks for each individual line of dialogue are evaluated, this stack is evaluated first. So at the moment, if I were to add some dialogue to this quest, every NPC in the game would say it because there's no conditions restricting who can and can't say the line. But if I add something to this condition stack here, then that'll mean only NPCs which fulfill the conditions here can say lines attached to this quest. So I'm gonna right click in here, select new. We're gonna use this default get is ID condition, which will mean only NPCs with the particular ID that I set will be able to say lines in this quest. So we're gonna click in here where it says invalid. That'll allow us to choose a new one, wait for it to load. Here we go, and we're going to type JR12, and here we are, JR12 follower. That is the ID of Jacuzzi. So press OK, and OK there. And now, when we come to adding dialogue in a minute, only Jacuzzi will be able to say it. Now, before we close this quest and save the game, the final thing I want to draw your attention to is if you look over here under character, under quest in the object window, 
you'll see there's all these different headers. Bounty quests, build your own home, that's what BYOH stands for, civil war, creatures, daedric dialogue, etc. Now, it'd be really great if we had one of these bespoke headings just for our quests here, because we're probably going to have quite a few different quests for Jacuzzi by the time we're done with this mod, and it'd be really handy if all we had to do to see them was to click on one of these headers. So you can do that using this box, the object window filter. So in here, we're going to type JR12 Jacuzzi follower, and then a slash. And if we do that and press OK and save the mod, you won't be able to see it now because we need to close and reopen the mod for it to take effect. But when we do so, we'll have another entry in this list, which will be JR12 Jacuzzi follower. Now, before we go any further, we have to remember to go back and fill that missing script property with this alias we've created. So go over to scripts, click on the JR12 Jacuzzi controller script, hit properties, and here's that empty follower alias property. Now, if we go to edit value, and we select under pick quest JR12 Jacuzzi follower, which is done automatically here, and we hit this pick alias drop down menu, we should find there's our alias. So if you just click that and hit OK, and we're all ready to go. Now it's time to start setting up some dialogue. So to do that, go over to the player dialogue tab at the top here, right click in this box and select new. So we're creating a new conversation branch here. So that's gonna be a new topic in that list of topics when you talk to your follower. And this one's gonna be JR12 Jacuzzi follower follow. There we are. So hit okay. And then it's going to be the first topic for that. So if you've got multiple lines of dialogue you want to chain together, you can do it in different topics. So we're going to call this one follow A1. And press OK. Here it is created here. Now the topic text is going to be what you say to the follower in order to initiate this. And this is going to be follow me. I need your help. Which is the standard dialogue for recruiting a follower in Skyrim. So now we need to set up what the NPC is going to say back to you. So to do that, right click here and select new. So this is the new response window and in here you can type in what your NPC is going to say and that is this one will follow gladly. And here you can set an idle animation, which is going to be an animation the NPC would use as they say the line, like idle, applaud here, various other options. I'm not going to choose any of those. I'm going to leave it at none for the moment. But I am going to set an emotion type, which is the facial expression your NPC is going to have. And I'm going to choose happy. Now, setting the emotion value here controls how strong that facial expression is. So zero means it's completely neutral. 100 is the biggest, stupidest grin you've ever seen in your life. I'm going to set it at 50, which is a nice halfway house. And then I'm going to click OK. So now we have the topic info window, which gives you more control over the line. And down here is where you put any scripts that you're going to attach. So you can either put them in begin, which means they'll play when your NPC starts saying the line, or end, which means they're going to play when your NPC finishes saying the line. We're going to put ours in end here. So if you go down to the video description again and select uh, the appendix 2C, it'll take you to this part of my website where you can find this script fragment, which is the one to set your follower to be recruited. So if you highlight that and select copy, go back to the creation kit and here in the end fragment, hit paste. Now we've got get owning quest, which returns this quest as JR12 Jacuzzi controller, which tells us we want to call a function in this script, which is attached to this quest. And then dot set follower means we're calling that set follower function we created earlier. And we're passing to it AK speaker. And that is the creation kit's default name for whoever is currently saying this line. So if we pass AK speaker, it passes whoever said this line, which will be Jacuzzi. And by using this particular structure here, we aren't defining any properties for our script to use. So all we need to do is just hit compile and it's good to go. JR12, TIF, you'll always get that at the start of one of these quest script fragments. And then you'll have all of this, uh, this ID at the end. So now we need to set the conditions for this line of dialogue, which are the factors that need to be true for this dialogue option to be available. And what we want is for this to only be visible when the NPC isn't currently following you. So to do that, we're going to right click in the conditions section 
and we're going to select new. And then we're going to click here where it currently says get is ID. This is the condition function, which is the thing we're checking whether or not it's true. And we're going to start typing in get in faction. And there we go, it comes up and just select that. And the faction we want, which you type in here under parameters, where it says invalid initially, you select here and start to type in dismissed follower faction. There we go. And the comparison here is saying, is that equal to, less than or equal to, less than, not equal to, greater than or, e greater than or, greater than or equal to. We're going to leave that as equal to. And the value is 1. So we're going to say, if get in faction for the faction dismissed follower faction equals 1, i.e. if our follower is in the faction dismissed follower faction, then this line of dialogue will be available. And then we're going to press OK. And hit OK again. So now we need to create dialogue to tell our follower to wait. So to do that, we're going to right click here, select New, and do JR12 Jacuzzi Follower Wait Here. And press OK. And the topic is going to be JR12 Jacuzzi Follower Wait Here A1. So do that and hit OK. Then right click in this box here. And the dialogue we're going to have is Kajit will wait. I'm going to leave the emotion type as neutral this time and just hit OK. Now the only condition we need for this one is, again, get in faction. But this time we're looking for current follower faction. There we go. And just press OK. So now for the script for this line of dialogue, we're going to need to go to Appendix 2D in the description of this video. And that'll take you back to my website. And we'll have this script here to copy and paste. Get owning quest as JR12 Jacuzzi controller dot follower wait. So that's calling the follower wait function we defined earlier. So just right click on that and copy. Go back to the creation kit, click here and paste and compile. And we're good to go. So press OK. Now we need to set the topic text for this one to wait here. And then we need to set up a way of getting our follower to follow us again after we've told him to wait. So we're going to do this within the same topic as we did the wait here dialog. We're going to just click underneath info. And we're going to click new. And this time it's going to be Kajit will be right behind you. And I'm going to click OK. And then in here we need two conditions this time. We're going to need get in faction. Has to be current follower faction. And we need to get actor value. And that's going to be waiting for player is equal to 1. We press OK. And what that's going to do is mean that this dialogue is only available when our NPC is currently waiting for the player. Now the script for that one we will find under Appendix 2E. So if you click on that link you'll find yourself on this page where we need to copy this script return to the creation kit and paste it in the end fragment. So that's calling the follower follow function that we created before. So click compile on that. Now for this, we don't want the dialogue to be wait here anymore. We want to overwrite it with something else. And to do that, we can type it in the prompt here. So anything typed in prompt will overwrite the topic text. So this time we're gonna have follow me. So press okay on that. Now, the way the creation kit works through the dialogue stack to decide whether our NPC is going to say this or this is that it starts with the top dialogue and then checks its conditions, and if they're satisfied, then it says that line. If those conditions aren't satisfied, then it looks at the next line. Now, because the only condition we have on Khajiit will wait is get in faction current follower faction equals one, so long as our NPC is recruited, he will always say this line when we select this topic. Whereas what we want is for him to say this line if he's currently already waiting for you. So the way to do that is simply to click on it and press the left arrow key 
And that'll move it up to the top of the stack. So now we've got Khajiit will be right behind you as the first thing that happens. So he'll say this if these two are true. And if these two aren't true, he'll move on to say instead Khajiit will wait, which only requires the current follower faction one to be true. So we'll press OK with that. And now we can set up the next line of dialogue. So that line is, I need you to do something for me. And that we're going to call JR12 Jacuzzi Follower Favor. So press OK on that. And we're going to call that JR12 Jacuzzi Follower Favor A1. Are you seeing a pattern here? Press OK. And the text is going to be, I need you to do something for me. Create the dialogue again. And this time Jacuzzi is going to say, certainly. What would you like this one to do? And then the condition for this one, all we need is get in faction. Current follower faction. Now the script for this one, you'll find in appendix 2F, which will take you to this part of my website where we've got akspeaker dot set doing favor that's literally all we need so just copy that put that in the end there and that's setting the npc who said this line to enter the favor state which means you'll then be able to select the um, object you'd like them to interact th with so press compile on that and press ok now the next line we need is some trading dialogue so that i'm going to call jr12 jacuzzi follower trade Hit OK on that, and again, A1. I always do A1 because that follows Skyrim's vanilla conventions for this sort of thing. And the topic text is going to be, I need to trade some things with you. And the response is going to be, suddenly, let us trade. And for that, the condition, again, is get in faction current follower faction there we go and the script is now under appendix 2g so if you go to appendix 2g copy this it's again just really simple it's aka speaker dot open inventory so this script will open the inventory of any speaker who says this line so we're just going to paste that in there compile and jobs are good un. Now the final line of dialogue to set up is the dismiss dialogue. So this is to tell your follower it's time for us to part ways. So that's going to be JR12 Jacuzzi Follower Dismiss. A1. And that's going to be it's time for us to part ways. And we're going to hit new. This one will see you again soon. Yes. And the condition for that, again, has to be get in faction. Current follower faction. Now you'll find the script for this under Appendix 2H. Here it is. Just copy that. Stick it in the end. This is get owning quest as JR12 jacuzzi controller dot could dismiss follower. So this is calling the dismiss follower function. And for this one, check the box for goodbye and what that means is that when the npc has said this line the conversation will end he'll no longer be presented with any more topics he will simply walk away and press ok so now we're done setting up all the dialogue so hit ok remember to save the game and now our npc is currently on both follower frameworks both the vanilla one with all the vanilla dialogue options and this new one we've just created now we need to transition him from being on the vanilla one to being fully on the custom one and the last step to do for that is to give him a special custom voice type so click on voice type down here under character right click and select new and we're going to call this jr12 jacuzzi voice that'll do set the gender don't check allow default dialogue and press OK. So that's created the voice type and now we need to assign it to our actor. So click actor, find our actor we created before. That's JR12 follower. Here we are. Now go over to the traits tab and under voice type where we chose male Khajiit before. Now select 
JR12 Jacuzzi Voice and press OK. Save the mod and now all that remains is for us to test this out in game. So here we are back in game like we did last time. I'm going to open the console and type COC Winterhold the Frozen Hearth to teleport straight to our follower. Wait for that to load. So here we are, back in the frozen half. Let's go and find Jacuzzi. Where is he hiding? Here he is. Hello, good sir. Now, you'll notice he doesn't have any of his dialogue options available. All he's got is this one added by I need. And the reason for that is a thing called the dialogue bug. And what that means is that mod added dialogue often will not load on the first try. When you load into game and go to test it, it's usually not there until you've saved and reloaded at least once. So let's just step back from Jacuzzi, hit quick save, then hit quick load. Wait for it. And now if we go and talk to him, here we are. Follow me, I need your help. Now there's that subtitle, this one will follow gladly. And here's all the dialogue now. Now if I press escape, with a bit of luck... I'm sorry, could you describe the He should get up and follow, here we are. Monster was turned come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. What did you do? Draw my weapon, he draws it his weapon. Minor, there you go, he's functioning as a I've follower. Now if we test out the dialogue options, I need to trade it's, some things with you. This is why people have here we go, let's open his inventory. Oh, it is time for us to part ways. Now, because we haven't recorded any dialogue for this yet, there's often a little bit of lag before he actually does what he's supposed to do. If we go back to him now, here we are again. Follow me, I need your help. Right, I need you to do something for me. And here we've entered the favour state, so I can tell him to wait there. And he should go. There we go. I tab out of that and I talk to him. I can say follow me. So the wait there has turned into follow me. There you go. Wait here. Jeep will wait. Follow me. And look, when I say wait there, we get this jacuzzi is waiting for you objective like we set up. So if I press it again, wait here. There we go. Jacuzzi is waiting for you. And if we look under quests, it's not there. Now, the reason for that is that we forgot an important step. So if we go back into the creation kit and open up our quest, JR12 Jacuzzi Follower, and go to quest data, we left the type as none. And in reality, because we set up this objective for it, that needs to be miscellaneous, so that that objective will show up as a misc quest in the journal, rather than not showing up anywhere at all. So having changed that, we'll press OK, save, and dive back into the game. So now that we've fixed that, if we go back up to our friend Jacuzzi and say wait here, we get that objective and if we open the journal, there it is under miscellaneous. Jacuzzi is waiting for you and sure enough, if we open up the map, there's the objective right on Jacuzzi. Great stuff. Now that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks so much for watching. If you found it helpful, please do click the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch, drop me a friendly comment, all that sort of thing really helps me out. Anyway, I'll see you next time for part three, where we're going to be doing some voice acting. Bye-bye!